Morris, presented by Dr. Mohamed Soui. We have pres uh, presenting and introducing Dr. Mohamed, and most of us are aware about him. Okay. okay very good. Thank you very much, Dr. Sam. And I want to again to thank the organizers and Dr. Menel and everyone here and all the audience for this. So the, this is, I have a two uh, PowerPoint presentation and those are separate entities like the lectures before. So we can stop any time and the, the committee here can stop me any time because if I talk, I can speak till tomorrow. Uh, so the six cord stromal tumors. Sex cord stromal tumors of the ovary is very rare tumors, except the fibroma. So when I tell my trainees this, you will see most probably where in the exam. Okay, so this is in the exam. You go to the exam, there is no common entities in the exam, most probably rare entities. You go, we select, because we are a mean people. Okay, so try to, to send the most difficult one, okay? Very, so this is one of the tumors. The first, as we go through, is the clinical presentation of the patient. Okay, so this is Buffalo here. This is the Niagara Falls. That side to, the, to your left is the American side, and that side, I assume, is the Canadian side. You can go there very nice, especially in the winter when there is frozen and those water freeze comes like, uh, you know, ropes or something like that. So I will present with the first case. Uh, so this is, I will present the topics in order according to the book, like any, any pathology book. But uh, I will present as a case because this may be more attractive. It is a 70 years old laparoscopic removal of both ovaries and fallopian tube and the grossly 2.5 centimeter ovoid, tan white, whirled, glistening, and rubbery mass. The mass is well circumscribed and compresses the ovarian tissue. So when you do ovary, specifically ovary, or any organ, or any pathology, you have to look for the clinical history. The most striking is the age, age of the patient. In the ovary specifically, there is very bimodal distribution of tumors, as we'll see, either in very young or a little bit older age group. So that's, there is nothing, maybe nothing in the middle, okay? So this is 70 years old, so you have to, to exclude some tumors from your brain immediately. You have to ex ex exclude germ cell tumors. You have to exclude many other things. You have to exclude uh, sertoli leading cell tumors by that age. When I say exclude, exclude in 95% or something like that. But the tumors, as I say, don't read the textbook. The tumor just can come anytime, anywhere, with no any uh, uh, inciting factor. So this is the... Uh, microscopic low power view here, as you can see, what we have here is a spindle cell lesion. Very bland at this power, no obvious mitosis, no obvious uh, necrosis, nothing. Just a spindle cell benign, uh, something looks benign at this, at least at this power. Then you, glow, you go close up view, you find it again the spindle cell lesion, the spindle cells, and among the spindle cells, there is maybe like a hyalinized material or, or collagen uh, in between. More close-up view to show you the nuclear features. What are the nuclei looks like here? Looks like tapering, if you will. The edge, look at the edge of the nucleus from that side and that side, that terminal part. Is it what we call cigar-shaped? Cigar-shaped means like uh, broad. Or tapering, tapering like slim. So when you look at this, this is maybe like tapering, but it depends on the cut, how you cut this. Sometimes it should like cigar shaped. But anyhow, this is like tapering cells, some collagen, hyalinized material in between those spindle cells. And there is no mitosis as we saw, there is no necrosis, and it is in the ovary and 70 years old. More close up view to show the spindle cells, maybe to the left, there may be some cells with plump uh, cytoplasm a little bit, is xenophilic cytoplasm, <coughs> but this is due to the cut also. I assume the cells to the left are the same like to the right, but when we cut, something will come transversely, something will come longitudinally. And do anyone know what is this stain? Oh, I'm sorry, I put the, 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 the name on the slide. Don't see the name, what, what is this stain? This is retic, reticulin. You know, this is one of the very uh, uh, little or small number of special stains. Usually you go to the immunohistochemistry, where is the brown staining, something like that. 
but very rarely to do the, 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 the special stains like reticulin, but it will help here. How can you describe this, guys, the trinese, trinese, how is this stain? How can you describe this? Any trinee? No single trinee here? Okay, how you describe this? Diffuse? Yeah, so very good, excellent. So positive staining around the groups of cells, not individual cells. Or, or no, no, no. It is it, it is around uh, individual cells. Yes. So it is positive around the individual cells. Every cell has positivity. Is that right? So what is the diagnosis here? Let us take. Uh, oh, there is no uh, there is no selections. So this is a fibroma, most common tumor, sex cord stromal tumor. Okay, uh, fibroma. So the fibroma. We have, uh, I will go to the, mainly to the, 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 the morphology, okay? Because if I go to everything, I will have a stay till tomorrow. But we have conventional fibroma and we have cellular fibroma and you can say also mitotically active uh, fibroma. So those are the types of fibromas in the ovary. And the microscopic findings, I think we mentioned all those, the conventional, the bland spindle cells, the story form pattern, abundant collagen, matrix in between the elongated nuclei with tapered ends. Usually I keep repeating, I don't know, I, need, I, I, I wish to, to, to leave this habit behind, you know, to repeat, you know, you know but at, at the end, this is my feature or characters. No cytologic atypia, infrequent mitotic figures, calcifications and the edema, very common. Calcifications and the edema, very common. When you go to the cellular fib uh, uh, fibroma, what is cellular is cellular. What is the limit here? There is no limit. There is no amount, no, no quantity. But it is as conventional lyomyoma with the following differences. There is increased cellularity. As I said, there is no parameter. What is increased is increased, okay? No or minimal collagen matrix. For me, I go, if I see no collagen, just the spindle cells, the spindle cells, this most probably is cellular uh, fibroma. There is no minimal edema. There is no place for the edema here. It is cellular from the definition. Necrosis with sharp demarcation from the viable tissue may be seen in very good number of those. So because the cells started to grow, it, 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 the, the tumor think it is malignant. It is not. But when the tumor start to grow, it grows the blood supply. So those some cases, about 30% 30, uh, 30 of those, you may have some necrosis but it is not the tumor necrosis we just saw in the previous presentation. Mitotically active, what is mitotically active fibroma? You have high mitotic count. When we say high, it is greater than or equal to four mites per high power field. No more than mild nuclear etibia. We have paper before, maybe like in the 70s or the 80s to Dr. Youngs, and he described this as like low-grade uh, fibrosarcomas, but he published another paper and said, no, 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 no. So you can have even uh, uh, greater than four, as I said, you may have 10 mites per 10 high power field. You may have even more. The clue is the nuclear etibia. There is no nuclear etibia, there is no fibrosarcoma. There is nuclear etibia, then we talk about this later. Okay, so this is the etibia, not the mitotic figures. And even I didn't put here from four to 50 or four to 10. It's greater than four. Any mitotic figures with no etibia, you call it mitotically active fibrom. Is that cl clear for the screen? Okay. And this uh, table here showed you the, a lot of stains in the whole sex cord stromal tumors listed to the left here. So the granulosa and everything. Look at the last row of the fibroma. The stains here, the WT1, positive in 100% of the cases steroidogenic factor or steroid factor number one, positive in 100% of the cases, in heaven, positive in 50% of the cases, call retinin in 25% of the cases. Because this is six cord stromal tumors, those are the stains we use. Mainly the stains you are going to talk uh, today a lot is the, if you call it specific or if you will, in heaven and call retinin. Those are the two stains we are going to, to mention in this. But in the fibroma, it is, it, it, the fibroma is just insinuated in this category like that. When you go to six cordostromal tumors, you think of, of what? You think of granulosa cell tumor, you think of uh, Sertoli-Lydic cell tumor, the fibroma is the little guy, okay? So this is, this is what it is. But because of that, just 50% only positive in, uh, for inhibin. And when it is positive, it is very faint, weak positivity. If you see it by the end of the day, you may think it is negative, okay? 
board examination and uh, PhD examination, all examinations, very common questions here, okay? Sometimes our board will just send those questions, genetic associations, Meigs syndrome and Gorlin's syndrome. Meigs and Gorlin's, remember those, okay, for the exam. So, and in the Meigs syndrome, have ascites and pleural effusion, and in the Gorlin syndrome, they called the nevoid basal cell syndrome, or basal you have basal cell carcinomas, and the mutated P, uh, PTCH gene, trisomy 12, also is a feature of fibroma. This slide have a lot of questions. If you go to the USMLE exam or any exam, I, I send those. So how will you remember this, guys? I don't know. I don't know. This is what it is. Okay, and we leave the lecture with you and everything in the books, everything in the textbook. This is the fibroma. Differential diagnosis, the fibrosarcoma, you have the etibia. Do you, do you see mitosis here? No, you don't see mitosis. The etibia, severe etibia, at least moderate etibia, different size and shapes. Then the lyomyoma, by the way, lyomyoma is very, very, very rare in the ovary. Every time I see the tumor and looks like cigar shapes, looks like lyomyoma, and I have some time, then I do the markers, the smooth muscle markers, and they come negative. Then I give up. Uh, everything is fibroma until proved otherwise. So it is very rare to have a uh, lyomyoma in the ovary. Then fibromatosis. Fibromatosis is not fibroma just the diffuse expansion of the stroma of the ovary and usually bilateral and we call it fibromatosis or you just leave it alone don't call anything and the gastrointestinal stromal tumor and the stains will help you in this so this is the differential diagnosis the most important it is actually fibroma is no differential it is fibroma as i showed you so when you see this just to call it fibroma and don't worry i know that the spindle cell lesions sometimes people are scared I spindle cell lesion, oh my goodness what i do with this okay so don't do that or do it no problem I have here, I summarized everything I said in this. I'm not going to read through this, but as I can, the inhibin may be like, this is in my experience, 70% positive carotene and said 100% here. Again, because this table I showed you before, just one publication. Okay, I, I leave a few seconds for you just to, to go through this, but this is what I said for the fibrom. Case number two, 33 minutes, that's very a lot. 62 years old with ovarian cyst, abnormal bleeding, and we have section from the ovary, and the grossly diffusely tan white, solid cut surfaces with pale yellow nodules. And I make yellow in, uh, in uh, black font. So this is the low power uh, here. Have again some maybe spindly, maybe a little bit epithelioid, but there is blump cytoplasm there is some cytoplasm here compared to the previous case but it is if you just imagine as i said pathologist you have to imagine and when i tell you something you have to believe it you know that just take it light but believe it so this is maybe in the category of this not glandular not epithelial okay more close-up view to show you these groups of cells with central nuclei blump cytoplasm no mitosis no necrosis maybe some hyalinization or collagenization around them more of the same here, some maybe apoptotic bodies here. I don't think those are mitosis, maybe one mite here or two. So very low mitotic figures. More of the same to show you the cytoplasm, the blump and all this stuff. Do you need any stains, guys? Do you have the reticulin? Very good. So I didn't do it, I'm sorry. But, but here we have the, 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 the stains, the two stains I'm going to tell you, and I keep repeating those as again as a broken recorder. So inhibin and the call retinin, strongly positive, strongly positive in this. What is your diagnosis? Very good, excellent. Lutinized thicoma, lutinized thicoma. So the thicomas, unilateral, diffuse uh, pattern. We have again the fusiform cell alternating with the hyaline Lakes like the fibroma, but the cells have ill-defined borders and the pale, you know, conspicuous cytoplasm. You have vesicular nuclei with delicate membranes and no atibia. Infrequent mitotic figures, calcifications, again, are common in these tumors. It is fibroma, but with some luteinization, okay? Then you go to the luteinized thecomas. So this is what I discussed here is the thecomas. What is luteinized thecomas? And look at the last line for now. It is associated with sclerosing peritonitis to the extent that the WHO, I don't think this version, the version before, it just makes this only should be associated with 
sclerosing peritonitis with like inflammation in the peritoneal cavity and you will see the picture. So it is hypercellular. Uh, usually the luteinized thecomas are bilateral tumors occur in the ovarian cortex, not in the medulla. And the neoblastic spindle cells and the clusters of ovoid lutein cells with abundant cytoplasm. The case I showed you. High mitotic rate, when I say high, it is not like 10 or 20. High maybe like 4, 5. It is still in the low uh, number of mitotic figures. The point here is the bilaterality. You have this tumor bilateral. Then look for the associated with the sclerosing peritonitis. And this is the sclerosing peritonitis. You have the omentum here and the fat. Then among this, you have this fascicular growth of pattern of the fibroblast, mitotically active, but cytologically bland and the inflammatory cells. And this is not tumor. This is just reactive process in the uh, peritoneal cavity. And those, again, those are the features are summarized those here in this table. I'll leave you for a few seconds to go through them. So I divided them in thecoma and uh, luteinized the thecomas, as I just mentioned. And thecomas and fibromas, by the way, most of, most of the tumors I'm going to discuss today is unilateral tumors. Okay, except in syndromics uh, like Meigs syndromes and Gerlin's syndromes, those usually are bilateral tumors. More of the same, if you go to the stains here, the inhibin in 100%, calretin in 100%, I shouldn't write 100 like that. I should write 99 or something, because nothing 100%. Okay, but this is like, most of the cases are positive for the inhibin and the calretinin. And the other uh, little guy of those uh, stains, the CD56. We have this stain also for the six cordostromal tumors, 100%. WT1, 100%. Steroidogenic factor, 100%. You have a lot of 100% here. I didn't realize this. Okay. But negative for the CD99, negative for the epithelial membrane antigen, and MART1 and CD34. And the reticulin stains, again, will highlight single individual cells as the stain we saw in the fibroma. Case number three. We have a 67 years old presented with hyperandrogenism. Okay, and the ovarian mass section from the ovary, and the gross picture is golden tan cut surfaces with a firm tan, almost one centimeter area. When I try to put this, not a real case, I try to put the, the, the real morphology of those cases when you go to the textbook. And when we distribute those lectures in the PDF file, so those are the, the, the typical cases with these descriptions. Again, 67 years old. Then if you look at this, there is like nested pattern. You have these groups of some cleared cytoplasm. Maybe the nuclei a little bit pushed toward one side, maybe. As I said, you can imagine, you have to imagine, you're a pathologist. So maybe signet ring, if you will. Okay, and this septa separating those groups of cells. More close up view to show you the signet ring features of those cells and the nuclei towards one end of the cell and the clear cytoplasm and the nodular pattern. I shouldn't repeat this nodular pattern at all. I just say just signet ring-like cells. And here again to show you the same, but no mitosis. There is a, a, a no, no, no necrosis. Maybe one might? Okay, very good. Oh, very good catch. Because I look at the other side. Because I wanted to try to describe the features of this, but there is some mites here. Very good. Maybe two mitoses here. Do you need any stains for this? Serenese, what stains you want to put on, on this case? What's that? Yeah, colorectin and inhibin. And before that, what you put, most important? Cytokeratin. Very good. Cytokeratin, because here you want to exclude what? Krokenberg tumor. Very, very good. Excellent. And those are the stains here. The first to the left, uh, the CD10, strongly positive. Then Vimentin down is positive. And to the right here, we, has, we have FSF1 positive. And those are the other stains, everything like negative like that, including the keratins, AE1, AE3, and the ERG, cell 4 And you, you should know every stain of those, so I'm trying to exclude something else. So what is your diagnosis for this with this immunoprofile and the description and the topic of today? Signet ring stromal tumor, excellent. Signet ring stromal tumor. What is here is different from the normal description of signet ring stromal tumor. Usually, the signet ring stromal tumor is diffuse pattern, but
but this is the case I have, so I have to represent my pictures, okay? So this is diffuse growth pattern of those bland spindle cells with vacuolate, vacuolated cytoplasm and the nucleus pushed eccentrically toward one end. The signet ring cells are present diffusely or focally and no or mild atypia and no or little mitotic figures, no epithelial proliferation, no dysmoplasia, no tumor necrosis. And the differential diagnosis, you have to do this, okay, is the Krokenberg. But the Krokenberg, those are the features here, the bilaterality, the epithelial proliferation, such as glands, you may find some glands, some nests or cords, lymphovascular invasion and perineural invasion. And unfortunately, unfortunately in the Krokenberg, there is no much ATP. There is no much mitosis. So you'll be stuck, you have to exclude this. But plenty of keratin. Don't put one keratin, it is negative, then you go, no. Put AA1, AA3, low molecular weight keratin, CAM 5.2, you can put CK7, or, and look at the history of the patient. The patient may have stomach cancer, or has some, and the bilaterality. Very good, so this, this is the signet ring stromal tumor. Uh, here, the, uh, you can get everything I said. And positive for Vimentin and CD10. And the negative, this tumor is specifically for calretinin in heaven. This may be the only tumor in this group which is negative for the sex cord stromal markers, negative for calretinin in heaven, EMA. EMA is good stain, I like it. Even in the previous lecture, I said, what is the EMA? You know, because sometimes you find all the keratins negative. Then EMA is, is positive and it is not keratin, okay? And other stains are negative here. So everything else is negative. CK20 is 20 negative, seven negative, and so on, okay? Case number four, sixth, I, I will be a little bit fast uh, from here on, so buckle up, everyone is ready? Okay, you can stand and sit down again if you are a little bit sleepy. So 67 years old, presented with right ovarian cyst, ovarian cystectomy, tumor is six centimeter, portion of pink red membranous tissue, no discrete papillary excrescences. And this is what we have. This is like uh, the, 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 the stroma, a little bit of the ovary with these uh, cells with clear, again, cytoplasm, maybe central nuclear. Let's go high power a little bit to see what we are saying. So central uh, nuclei, maybe a little bit, some nucleoli, if you will. Uh, here it is, yes. So more close of you, nested pattern of these cells, clear cytoplasm, central nuclei, prominent nucleoli, no much mitosis, maybe you see one mite here or something, yes, maybe one mite here or something like that. So do you need stains for this? Do you know? Or do you know the diagnosis without stains? We can put some stains. So in heaven, here is uh, positive. Calretinin is positive. Epithelial membrane antigen is uh, positive. Milan A is positive. So what's your diagnosis for this? Steroid cell tumor benign. Steroid cell tumor benign. Okay, let's, I will go describe those cells. Let us take this case also. Then we go two cases together. 67 years old with hyperandrogenism, presumed diagnosis of ovarian hyperthecosis. Section from the ovary, yellow red hemorrhagic cyst like, which measures two centimeter. Xenophilic cytoplasm, not the clear cytoplasm we saw before. Central nuclei, prominent nucleoli, no much etibia. And this is here, I have to look at this, uh, screen is better than this. Again, this nested pattern of those with, uh, with plenty of cytoplasm and central nuclei, prominent nucleoli. Go high power here to show you the, what I say. Looks like the previous case. And this is here, I'm trying to find some crystals of Renki or something like that, I don't see them. There is some? Diagnosis of this? Steroid cell tumor NOS. Steroid cell tumor, you know, it's very good. So my microscopic findings, I think I described them. The diffuse aggregates of those cells separated by thin fibrous uh, septa. Polygonal cells, abundant, xenophilic, or clear, vacuolated cytoplasm, okay? Distinct cell borders, and centrally blazed nuclei with minimal etibia and the prominent nucleoli. Those steroid cells like to have the central nuclei and the prominent nucleoli and the cytoplasm. The granular is enophilic or clear cells. Even if it is clear, still there is some granularity. And here we have no crystals of Renke. Because if we have crystals of Renke, you are dealing with what? Lead cell tumor. Okay, so you keep looking at Renke. Okay. 
what are the malignant features? Every report I put those, I put uh, the malignant features. You see here large size. When you say large, what is large is large. It's greater than seven centimeter. High mitotic index greater than two per 10 high power field. Necrosis and hemorrhage and significant nuclear ETB. The steroid cells sometimes benign and like the apocrine cells in the breast we talked yesterday. Okay, so we have atibia. They are steroid cells it's secreting all the time. Their job all the, your life span, they just to secrete hormones and they, so you, have, you should be active. They should have DNA, uh, nuclei, nucleoli, all this stuff. So significant nuclear atibia to put them in the category of malignancy, okay? Biomarkers, again, the inhibin 100%, the car written in 100%, SF1, 100%, and I add to those groups for you guys the MART1, MART1 for the steroid cells. Negative for FOXL1, and we'll talk about this, WT1, chromo, granin A, and HMB45. And this is the crystals of Frankie, I think from case on, from the online, you see those cytoplasmic or even intra, uh, uh, cytoplasmic or sometimes in between the cells, this condensations or rod or spherical cytoplasmic or sometimes outside is xenophilic structures. So you will be dealing with leading cell tumors. Case number six, 56 years old with a typical endometrial hyperplasia. Can give you some hint here. She has endometrial hyperplasia and, uh, and fibroid. Sections from the left fallopian tube, gross left fallopian tube, length 3.5, diameter 0.6, means it is benign. Okay, they see nothing, just described as normal. And this is the fallopian tube to the left here and to the right uh, upper here, there is this collection of the cells we just saw. The same features we just saw like this. Central nuclei, prominent nucleoli, and xenophilic granular cytoplasm. No mitosis, no, uh, no prominent etibia, and all the features we just described. Here it, uh, here it is again. So what are you going to call this? Do you need stains? I can give you some stains. Inhibin is positive. I can just put the same slide from another case. Inhibin positive, calretin and positive. So what is your diagnosis for this? Don't forget, this is a benign fallopian tube grossly. Okay? And we have those collection. Steroid what? Excellent. High last cell, heterotopia. Heterotopia, because you don't have gross mass. For ovarian tumors in this category, you have to have a gross mass. Sometimes you get to somebody to gross for you and they didn't see the mass. This is different issue. There is no normal and microscopical incidence here of this, so I call this hyalus cell heterotopia or steroid cell hyperplasia, whatever you want to call, but call it something, okay? Steroid cell hyperplasia or hyalus cell heterotopia or leading cell hyperplasia. So any steroid hyperplasia here, whatever the terminology you like, use it. So the steroid cell hyperplasia, multiple nodules or clusters of steroid or leading cells, no gross mass, no gross mass, no organ distortion, mostly in the ovarian hyalus, but in this case, by uh, chance, it is in the fallopian tube. And this is, again, the summary of the steroid cell tumors I described. And this is maybe one or two slides, but this is everything. You can take pictures or you will find it in the PDF file. I hope they will send you the PDF file, guys. Uh, thank you for this part, but I'm going to go to the next uh, PowerPoint presentation. Can you help me to do this? Very good. We can stretch for 30 seconds or so. And we continue the part two. And this is again the storm we have like three weeks ago. You know, I remember this, you know, three weeks ago. All the doors shut, you know. I have like six feet of snow. And we have two doors usually at the homes. So one door open to the outside and one open to the inside. I open the inside one, but I can't open the outside one. I have to take uh, off the glass to just dig in the snow, but this is not my home, this is somewhere else, okay, because I don't want to show you the... <laughs> so I will go to case one in this presentation, which is our case number seven, 50 years old, enlarged uterus, left ovarian mass, left adnexal mass, and we have section from the ovary. Diffuse growth pattern of those uh, blue cells, round, 
blue cells. You know, when the, all the digital small blue round cell tumors, then they drop the small because they are small or maybe not small. They call it blue round, but they say it, they are round. Then they drop the round blue cell. Then they drop the blue. They may call it cell only or something like that. But anyhow, so this is like monotonous cells, blue round cell tumors, small cell tumors. Close up view to show you maybe some, some spindly cell, but most of the cells are, are forming like tubule-like structures, but the main fe features here is the blue round cells. More of the same, I want to go to the higher power. And there is some structures here with, you know, like space, then proliferation around the space What's your diagnosis? Which type? Adult. Because she's 50 years old. But do you have, uh, could you have like a, a juvenile in 50 years old? Yes, you can. Could you have adult granulosa cell tumors in, in seven years old? Yes, you can. The, the way of the question when you go to, and the, somebody will ask you a question, see the way of asking, yes, say something like that, okay? So the adult granulosa cell tumors greater than 95% unilateral, and most of the tumors, as I said, of today is unilateral unless associated with syndrome. And confined to the ovary, 75% associated with uh, excess estrogen, causing precocious puberty, endometrial hyperplasia, as happened in this case. And it tends to occur up to 20, uh, tends to recur up to 20 years later. And I see this quite, not often, but quite few times find uh, lung lesion, and there is no history, and see the patient is perfect, nothing, and you see, and we do all the stains, then negative, 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 then at the end, we know that 20 years ago, 15 years ago, the patient has history of adult granulosa cell tumors. Even the clinicians, they don't think could recur like that, you know, they, they don't, even they forgot, and the patients will forget. So I see this maybe like three, four times, lung nodules or peritoneal nodules after years and years of so put this in your mind, okay, when you go to see this mission, it could be female and, uh, and uh, uh, 50 years old, 60 years old, has some tumor, and everything you give keratin negative, this negative, this negative, what's going on, just remember the inhibin and the carotene and put this in the back of your mind. And the prognostic factors I put in every single report for the adult granulosa cell tumors in the comment section. I say, uh, those are the prognostic factors the stage, age greater, all those like worse factors. Age greater than 40 years, abdominal symptoms, uh, palpable mass, incomplete tumor debulking, size greater than 15, grossly solid tumors, reduced beta catenin, but I don't do the beta catenin and I don't write this, and high mitotic rate and the capsular invasion or, or lymphovascular invasion. Those are the features of worse prognosis. Okay, because sometimes they call me the adult granulosa cell tumors, the tumor banking and all this. Is this is malignant or not malignant? Do you know, guys, is this uh, adult granulosa cell tumor malignant or not? It is a malignant tumor, okay, but there is no malignancy in the, in the name, okay? Because of the behavior, many of those cases will behave just indolent. There is no recurrence like anything. So because of that, we don't want to label the patient as malignant. When you label the, label the patient has tumor, what you do? You, you, you didn't do a favor for the patient in many cases. If this patient on the list of transplantation, they will take her out. If she is doing insurance, some insurance will refuse her. So, so, so you have to, 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 to be mind. So we just put adult granulosa cell tumors for this. Gross pictures uh, here, you have hemorrhage is very common, cyst formation is very common in this. Microscopic, you have small, bland, cuboidal to polygonal cells small blue round cell tumors. The patterns, you have tons of patterns of the granulosa cell tumor, called eggs in our bodies. And unfortunately, this is the very low incidence, but this is the one we remember for the exam. So small follicle-like structures filled with acidophilic material, but it is not the common pattern, by the way. So macro and micro follicular, gyriform, trabecular, solid, insular, pseudo, papillary, any pattern you can find. Sometimes you mix it with carcinomas when you have this, uh, uh, pseudo papillary pattern. Central round bale coffee bean. Remember the coffee bean nuclei with signet, with, with single prominent nucleoli. So this is the call exner bodies here. This is structures with cells around them. In the adult granulosa cell tumors, the coffee bean. You see, look at the nuclei, you find the, uh, you see the bean of the coffee, you have like crack, 
So we have these cracks in this, and this is one of the characteristic and the common question again for the board exam, because as I said, most common beliefs to find those tumor in the board exam, not in real life. But the granulosa cell tumor is actually is, is not that rare. And this is what, who described the retic before? I didn't put the sign here. So this is again, this is retic. But what is the pattern when you report to this retic? What are you going to call? Positive cells, in, uh, positive uh, staining encircling groups rather than individual cells. I write it like that. The clinician will say, oh, crazy, I don't care what he will say. But this is the description of us. This is encircling groups of cells to differentiate be it between the adult granulosa and the fibroma thicoma group. What is the gene linked to the adult granulosa cell tumor? Board exam. Excellent, excellent. Fox L2. And here is the Fox here. But you just add L2. Okay, so Fox L2. And those are the features here I summarized for you again, everything I said, all the patterns, all the information, maybe the next slide, or uh, maybe the, here the immune, where is the immunohistochemistry? Maybe it's down somewhere. Okay, then I go to the next case, 25 years old, you start to go 20, when you see 25 years old, you start to think of what? No case, no slides, nothing. Because when I see the case, I do the pre-analytic first. I don't see anything, nothing. I just say I know the organ or something. I look at the clinical history, how old she is, what, what is anything else, any previous history, anything. Then my brain started to, to mix what, what I'm expecting to see. I may see something strange, for sure, definitely. But this is how I build the diagnostic skills. 25 years old, ovarian mass, sections from the ovary. So we have this here, like maybe like if you describe this, what is the, 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 the whole picture, the big picture? Hypo and hyper, very good, hypo and hyper. And maybe uh, like nodular, if you will, maybe nodular, and the hypo and the hyper, and the nodular pattern, this like nodule, nodule, nodule here, maybe a little bit here, hypo and hyper areas, maybe spindly, spindly in nature, okay? So you can, as I said, try to imagine. And this again to show the hypercellular areas and the hypocellular areas in this. And the 25 years old, and what is this? What is this to the right, uh, lower part of the screen? No, no, this, this, this uh, uh, gland here. Like mucinous gland, is that right? Like mucinous gland in the, the bottom of the picture. Is that right? This is very significant by, for the diagnosis, by the way. This benign mucinous gland in this nodular, vague nodular structures with hypo and hypercellular area. What are those cells? The cells described in the previous cases looks like leadic cells, very good, leadic cells or lydic cells. What is your diagnosis here? Excellent. Sertoli leadic cell tumor with heterologous elements. What is this? What is the heck is that? Okay, so this is say what is this? What is the, where is the heterologous elements here? The mucinous glands. Very good. Sertoli leadic cell tumor with heterologous elements. Okay, so those are most often in younger patients, mean age of 25 years old. Virilization. It is Sertoli leadic cell tumor, so you expect androgen testosterone forever. No. So it is the virilization occurs in only one third of the cases. And actually, some cases present with estrogenic factors, hyperplasia and bleeding and all those stuff. So this is the Sertoli leadic cell tumor, gross picture like any other tumor. The pathology here, you have to know the types of this. You have to memorize these guys, the trainees. Sertoli leadic cell tumors are subclassified into well differentiated moderately differentiated, poorly differentiated, retiform, and the tumors with heterologous elements. I don't like this classification that much. So because w w where is the grading of the tumors with heterologous elements? So you can put these tumors with heterologous elements, most probably will be in the moderately differentiated. So this is the classification. Let us go through every one of them very quick. So the well differentiated, you have compact lobules of discrete round to partially confluent tubules. You have tubules, okay? Sometimes you think they are glands. You think it is carcinoma, low grade. I have a case last week before I come, the, say, uh, the week before I took my vacations, uh, at the end of December. More infiltrative, uh, more infiltrative between the collagen bundles, the tubule or the gland-like structures, 
uh, lumina range from open to sometimes very solid. But you have leading cells, plenty of leading cells, especially present at the, the periphery of the tumors and in between the, uh, the tubules. Something like that. When you see something like that, you think of what? You think of, uh, of carcinoma, is that right? But those are the Sertoli tubules. And the patient, why, why the patient 20 years has carcinoma? Could be, could be. But think 20 years and tubules and here and it has some virilization and all this stuff. Uh, uh, then you think of uh, uh, Sertoli leading cell tumor. And you see the leading cells, we describe the leading cells. Okay, with plenty of cyto cyto uh, xenophilic cytoplasm, central nuclei, prominent nucleoli, and the present in between the tubules and also in the periphery of the tumor. So this is the uh, so, uh, so, uh, low grade. Then the moderately differentiated or the intermediately differentiated cellular nodules, cellular nodules, vague nodularity, separated by hypocellular and hypercellular areas, and uh, remember this lobulated pattern. Cells grow in sheets and poorly formed tubules. The cells appear immature, all these leading cells, we saw this. Some, we go again, you see, to show you that, that to emphasize this vague nodularity, and you see the leading cells here at the periphery of the tumor. Then the poorly differentiated Sertoli leading cell tumor. Sometimes sarcomatoid, spindly, spindly, because of the spindle cell growth pattern, mimicking sarcoma high nuclear grade, absence of recognizable tubule formation. Leading cells are rare or absent. If we have absent leading cells, can we call this Sertoli leading cell tumor? Yes, it is. So when you go higher grade, you will find no leading cells or very, very little, and they go away. As the tumor go to the higher grade, the leading cells go away. Still Sertoli leading cell tumor. We say, why? We just call it Sertoli. Sertoli, there is no leading man, just to take it easy. Because we'll see the Sertoli, pure Sertoli cell tumors are usually very low grade. The pure Sertoli, usually low grade, okay? Uh, very, very rare to have high grade pure Sertoli on this. So we call this still Sertoli leading cell tumor. Something like that, spindly a little bit, or epithelioid, much cellularity, okay? Less hyalinization. This, but still the, the vague nodularity will stay in the tumor. You see these very ugly cells, nuclei, prominent nucleoli, mitosis, all of this. Sometimes it's spindly like that. If you have spindly, everything is spindly like that. And they have mitosis and everything, don't call it fibroma or fibrosarcoma because you put the inhibin strongly busted, carotene strongly busted, and so on. The Sertoli leading cell tumor with the Ritti form pattern, very rare, and looks like the Ritti testis. I'm not going to go through this. And this is the picture here, it looks like the Ritti testis here. This like papillary-like structures with fibrovascular cores. And then the Sertoli leading cell tumor with heterologous elements and endodermal is the most common, the mucinous gland, epithelium and the gastrointestinal epithelium and the carcinoid, the uh, most common heterologous elements. And you could find also cartilage, smooth muscles, uh, uh, everything else. So those are the heterologous uh, elements of this. Something like this I showed you, and sometimes you look at it trivial. What is this? Just something like include? No. This is, and another case, or maybe this is the same case, I believe, has the heterologous elements of cartilage here. What is the gene linked to this? Very good. You remember everything. So dicer one. You can remember some dicing some juice or something like that. So dicer one on this. So dicer one, I'm not going to go through this. You can read this from the PowerPoint. And have, by the way, you have germline DICER1 mutations associated with DICER1 syndrome. Very good field for the exams. And those are the constituents here of the DICER1 syndrome. Those again, the, uh, uh, the summary of what I said for this tumor. And I have this published, by the way, so you can look it up, and it is in multiple publications. So I have. How much? One minute? So maybe give one case only in this one minute. Case number three, 17 years old with ovarian mass, section from the ovary. Again, maybe something here similar, nodularity, vague nodularity, uh, spindly, but more hyalinization. Let's go close up view to see this. Hyalinization, spindle, uh, uh, cell proliferation, no mitosis, or maybe one mite. What is your diagnosis for this? Yes. Do you need any immunohistochemistry I can give you because sometimes I help you. Uh, Colorectin inhibin positive, SMA has maybe some batchy positivity. 
Yeah, this is difficult case. So this is the sclerosing stromal uh, tumor. It is difficult, you know, sclerosing stromal tumor. So it is one of the benign, resembles fibroma thicoma group, and the, but happens in younger age. So think of this in younger age, fibroma in older age. But if you're younger age, 10 years, 15 years, and have this looks like fibroma, so think of sclerosing stromal tumors. Pseudo lobular pattern of growth. Looks like sertoliolytic cell tumor, dilated and maybe branching vascularity, staghorn vascularity, collagen producing spindle cells, and sometimes lipid containing uh, cells. And this is the typical one, typical from the books, but I don't have the typical pictures. I showed you my atypical one. Okay, nodules like that, and the blood vessels looks like branching blood vessels, like those blood vessels here in the structure, very common in this in younger age group. This is another case I have in my practice here, nodularity, you see the vasculature, all this vasculature looks like staghorn, and the patient is 15 years old, and you do the inhibin carotene, so think of, uh, of this entity. And this is the uh, summary of the sclerosing stromal cell tumor. Do we have more time, or are we done? Continue to continue. We'll take uh, five minutes, like Dr. Maisa here took 20 minutes more. So, you want some? You want some uh, break? Some time like that? Drink something or do? No. Okay. 45 years old. History of a small bowel hamartoma. Section from the ovary, and this is what we have. Those structures. Okay. Let's go close up view. Like rounded structures with cells lining the, the, uh, the inside of the cells and maybe like some microbiology falling in, the, in those structures with some hyalinized material in the lumen. Maybe some calcifications also. Looks like tubules or glandular structures or tubular structures. And this may be calcification or some material in the center. And the cells has prominent nucleoli, central nuclei, cleared cytoplasm. What's your diagnosis? Six cord stromal tumors with annular tubules. And what is the syndrome here? So we have two distinct types. One of the, uh, those tumors associated with the Butzeger syndrome in 36%. And with adenoma malignum of the cervix. So this Butzeger syndrome, when you go to the GYN uh, tract, you have those two tumors. Remember those tumor, two tumors. Uh, and also the adenoma malignum. But the adenoma malignum, they changed the name of the adenoma malignum now, and this is not the subject of this lecture. And those without the Butzeger syndrome or adenoma malignum. What are the differences between those? So this is the ring structures we described, or tubules with peripheral oriented nuclei around this hyalinized material in the lumen and resembles granulosa cell tumor with Sertoli growth pattern. Butzeger syndrome, everyone should know this, autosomal dominant syndrome, uh, ovarian sex cordostromal tumor with annular tubules, bilateral with calcifications. You'll find a lot of those, you know, annular tubules in bilateral ovaries. The ovaries may be, themselves may be small, okay? And cervical adenoma malignum, as I said, the name changed now to gastric type adenocarcinoma, and mucocutaneous melanin pigmentation in the lips and oral mucosa. And sometimes the patient present with those. You will find uh, uh, pigmentation in the in, inside of the lips and in the oral mucosa. And you have the have GI hamartomatous polyposis. And this is the summary here of the of this lesion. Oh, that's done. That's okay. Thank you very much. What's that? It's done. Surah Abdan? Okay. Oh, gone. It's okay. Thanks. Thank you.